Hello folks, Anita Rao. Today we will speak about Jupiter's upcoming Gandanta transition. I've spoken about it briefly in the Jupiter transit video, but I want to delve deeper into Gandant, the Gandant transition, the Gandant points when a planet moves over there um, and what it what it essentially means so let's get into this okay first I want to um, cover a very basic premise The first thing to understand is that stars create signs in Jyotish. In other words, the nakshatras create the Rashis, not the other way around. This is the underlying precept in Vedic astrology, unlike Western astrology where the focus is on signs, the 12 signs, the Rashis. Yeah? In fact, this is one of the reasons that the moon is taken as the reference point, the vantage point, when we read a chart, right? And the moon corresponding to the nakshatras, the stars. Rather than the sun, which corresponds to the rashis, which are the 12 signs. So, the concept of Gandanta only becomes irrelevant when categorizing a nakshatra into a particular sign. Yes. So let's see where the Gandanta portions fall in the sky. Now, some say that the Gandanta exists for Pada at the edge of the signs, one fourth of a nakshatra equal to 320 of the celestial longitude on either side. This point of view sees a planet in Gandanta when a planet is located at the end of water signs from approximately 27 degrees till approximately 30 degrees of Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. And the beginning of fire signs from zero degrees till approximately 320 degrees of Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Others say the true nakshatra, Gandanta, is only 48 minutes of the celestial longitude on either side of water and fire signs. This point of view sees Gandanta as one murat at the end of water from approximately 29 to 30 degrees of Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, and one Mahurat at the beginning of fire signs from approximately zero to one degree, or precisely 48 minutes, right, if you really want to sort of pinpoint that. And this actually is the popular viewpoint. Like most astrologers will take Gandanta as 29 degrees of water till one degree of fire signs, that portion. So approximately two degrees in total. And this is what we're going to stick to for the purpose of this discussion. So, in essence, the deep Gandanta phase of Jupiter's movement, of Jupiter's current movement, through those points is going to be from approximately April the 17th till April the 26th, around 10 days. It's interesting to note that the end of water and the beginning of fire signs are both Bala Abasta. This is the infant state, but also the old and the dead is the interpretation here, right? 
where it's difficult to get predictable results. These gandanta portions can be places where we either feel like a child, not quite sure how to navigate, or we feel very old, not quite sure how to navigate. So what do we do? We hang on to things that make us feel safe, that make us feel secure, especially at the end of the water signs. Yet, we want to move forward with our inspiration if we're talking about the very, very beginning of the fire signs. But it seems either way that someone or something outside of ourself is oppressing us, holding us back. And that is our excuse for being stuck. That oppression itself is the illusion. Nananta transits can become a problem because they tend to provoke a fundamental change because of this. We're trying to just break through desperately. Planets passing through Gandanta portions can also bring very man powerful manifestations. Because the energy is so strong and concentrated there. And the planets are thus grasping and holding on to the karmas of that particular sign. So as a result, we feel blocked and we get stuck. Jupiter is going into a deep Gandanta transit it will, where it's going to be straddling between the energetic threshold of Pisces and Aries. Um, planets at the end of water can have, a nap, can have a knot around emotional attachments where you can feel stuck in an old reality that's long past. But there's a resistance to let go. There is a resistance to change because we're so unsure about what lies ahead. We want things to stay in some ideal state, even if it's just in our head, even if that state is long past, or even if that state is currently our status quo, but it's become very, very toxic and very, very difficult to handle. And this normally plays out in relationships. Here you may, you may experience some challenge around releasing attachments to the past and the emotions that that go around, that are also attached to the past. The eclipse on April 20th will highlight this, this challenge, this block, and make it necessary to let go. And of course, relationships are going to be impacted because the eclipse is taking place in the Aries-Libra axis, right? Now, planets in Gandanta can help to pop this bubble of illusion, right? Or um, on the other hand, passing through there can make you feel anxious and terrified. Now, fortunately, we're talking about Jupiter here. And we're not just talking about Jupiter, we're talking about a very strong Jupiter in Pisces which can help us. It can help us cut through those emotional attachments to a past story we think defines us. And it can help us cut through the excuses that prevent us from moving forward. The not that point being impacted by a strong Jupiter, a very well-placed Jupiter, at the, such as this one, in Pisces, it can help us connect to its highest vibrations. And the highest vibration that you can connect to with the Gandanta zone getting activated is essentially about realization. Realization in this life. It's about an issue that will let you progress toward your evolution quicker. 
it will help you progress toward moksha quicker. It will unveil the issues you have to overcome in this materialistic world to progress and wash away, and just wash away the past karma. It will bring experiences to help you re release the past and realize the true meaning of life. At the very least, it will help you let go and move on. So the question is, how can we use this powerful Jupiterian energy to release, to let go, and experience a deep realization? Now, the Pisces vibration is sattvic in nature, yeah, and it's orientated towards purity. It's orientated towards spirituality. And Jupiter's nature revolves around higher learning. It, it revolves around knowledge, education of all types, um, rituals. And this could be customs as well, but like even religious rituals, uh, travel, themes of detachment with Pisces are there, charity, uh, connecting to a higher power. This transit can invoke a great churning and bring about some deep and lasting change. Making this a once in a 12 year opportunity to truly heal and transform the deepest wounds that you carry. Whilst Jupiter is moving through Pisces, one thing to do is pay attention to your dreams. Take up a spiritual practice if you don't have one. Go on a yoga meditation retreat. Go on a spiritual pilgrimage. All these activities will bring some deep realizations. Write them down as one day you will look back at them. And during these approximately 10 days, see if you can adopt a very sattvic lifestyle, right? Like if you don't already have one, in, in, including just eating vegetarian food, uh, no alcohol, having a daily spiritual practice, that type of thing. Another thing that I suggest is quite simple, is to listen to healing music at least one hour before bedtime during these days. Classical ragas are very good. It's a good example of healing music. Um, in fact, I recently tried it. Um, you need to switch off from everything at least one hour before you sleep and listen to music and listen to healing music. Um, and you will have some very revealing dreams, especially the, during those like sun, like that sensitive point when Jupiter is going through the Gundan, like approximately ten days, and you can have some powerful break breakthroughs and realizations. Write them down, as I said. Um, now you know we're not responsible necessarily for what happened to us in the past, but we can take responsibility for our healing. Another thing you can do is, because Jupiter is, what, the ether element, you can connect. You can simply just connect to the open sky. So if you live near nature, that would be easy for you to do. If you don't, you can um, wake up at hours, like, just connect with the open sky. I mean, like, right before sunrise and right after sunset. Those are very sensitive um, times. Now, when Jupiter reaches that Gandhant portion of Aries in Ashwini, things can actually happen very quickly and suddenly. Normally, planets at the beginning of Fire Gandhant have a knot around inspiration and moving toward a new way of thinking, a new way of being. After all, beginning of Gandhant is always Ketu's nakshatra, right? So there's naturally some detachment there. And the fire element is also imbalanced. Right? Ketu tends to be very, very fiery. Um, 
but because it's Ketu ruled, we can get stuck with initiating change and we can get, we can resist getting started with something new. However, at this time, Rahu's presence is also there because Rahu is moving through Ashwini at the same time. So watch for making some blunders, um, some mistakes. So I would say either refrain from taking irreversible action at that time when Jupiter is when Jupiter and Rahu are moving close to each other, or go slow if you must act. I've spoken about this in the Jupiter transit video, so I'll, I'll link that below. Aries is Aries is what is Aries is a sign that's dominated by Mars, and it's still working out its impulses. Aries is very instinctual, and so at times you can take leaps without thinking them through because you're so eager to rush into things and start new things. And so. When Jupiter moves into that Aries Gunan, you can experience some uncomfortable event um, or come to some deep realization due to past events. People are actions from the past can resurface at this time to aid in the process, that letting go process. We also have a Mercury retrograde taking place at that time. So even if nothing resurfaces from the past, your mind will not be thinking so clearly. So refrain from, I would say, careless communication, um, inflated opinions, um, getting caught up in someone else's drama at this time. Try to reflect before responding, if possible. And notice where you're holding tension. Like it could be psychological, it could be emotional, it could be physical. And just like feel into it if you can. Um, there's, no try to, there's no need to try to fix it or eliminate it. Just notice it. What qualities is it characterized by? Like, are you anxious? For example, you could feel a lot of anxiety about the future. Um, so go, go deeper into that inquiry at this time when Jupiter is moving into that Aries Gunan, the beginning of fire. And, you know, intention, even though we don't, we often don't like to deal with it, there's a lot of information contained in that tension that you're feeling. And this can be triggered by that transit. With Jupiter's dignified presence, and even when Jupiter is connecting with Rahu, Jupiter is the stronger force here, right? Because we're talking about Aries. So with this dignified presence in Pisces and Aries, it can lead to some long overdue realizations and help you to take some big leaps in life. Yeah. So that's all for now. All the best. All the best, folks. Cheers.